joining us now from somewhere above the Earth are astronauts Janice Voss, Mike Gernhardt, and Roger Crouch. Welcome to the program. Nice to see you guys out there. I know that this is the second go-around. The first mission was cut short back in April because of a generator problem. How does it feel to be back in space? Janice, I'll begin with you. As you know, this is the first chance to refly a payload and a crew all together, the same group, so quickly. And I think all of us are marveling at how much it feels like we just left here yesterday. It's been much easier to get back in the swing of things. All the experiments are going great, and we all feel extremely comfortable and well-prepared because we've done this so recently. It's really been a great opportunity, and we really have great kudos to the folks down at the Cape and all the people in Mission Control in Houston, et cetera, that worked so hard to get everything turned around for us. Now, Janice, I understand that uh, all of you set up your orbiting laboratory up today and that uh, you actually lit a controlled fire inside the module. We sure did. We got our first experiment run on a combustion module experiment that's looking at producing soot, which, as you know, is a heavy pollutant and also a very dangerous component of forest fires. One of the great things about getting a chance to refly like this is this is one of the experiments we ran two runs last time, and after looking at the data post-flight and having a chance to think about what all the different downlink data they got meant, they redesigned the experiment a little bit, changed some of the parameters, and this first run on 94 was much better than either of the runs on 83. Now, Roger, I understand that uh, today you had a chance to quickly uh, see the Mir space station, that you had caught a glimpse of it. You're in different orbits, but did you have a chance to talk to the crew at all? Well, unfortunately, that was on the other shift, and I talked to those guys this morning, and they said it was absolutely brilliant out in the sky. I believe they said they were within about 50 miles of the orbit of the Mir. They could see it. It looked like a big Venus or about the size of the star or the planet Venus when you see that. But there was no radio communication today. Later on, we're hoping the possibility of having a chance to talk to them, but they're pretty busy over there right now. No, they certainly are busy. Mike, let me ask you for a moment. There are a lot of people who are concerned about uh, the activities that are going on Mir right at this time. Uh, there are concerns that maybe we should uh, altogether scrap the partnership with the Russians until they get the Mir space station fixed. What are your thoughts about that? Do you think it's safe? And uh, what are your thoughts about that aspect of the program? Well, I think that uh, we are justified in being concerned. However, uh, uh, the situation is stable there. And the thing that we have to remember is that they do have the Soyuz lifeboat, so they can leave that station at any time. And uh, I think that the joint partnership with Russia has been a, a good thing for us. Uh, uh, I'm not saying that it's good that these uh, contingencies have happened, but we are learning from that. It is making us a stronger team and better preparing us for the International Space Station. And I, I think uh, that we need to hang in there with them. Uh, I think we've learned a lot. We're going to learn a lot more. And uh, we're working together well as a team. And I can assure you that uh, the, the management of NASA and Russia has is, is, uh, got safety foremost in their mind. And... Uh, We'll do everything uh, the right way. This flame is very, very steady. Extremely steady. It looks like a single image. It's so steady. I'm down three clicks already. But that might be too far. Up one. It's pretty close. Down one. That looks like it might still be open to me, guys. I want to go down one more unless you stop me. Oh, that's definitely open. Down another. Going down another. Hi, this is Susan Still, the pilot. This is on flight day two for the red team. You can see I'm busily working on a laptop computer we call the PGSC. That's a computer we use to talk to the ground, also talk to our family if we need to. Panning around the cockpit here, you can see it's pretty light outside, so it's hard to see the commander's seat. As we're coming around, you see another computer. It's uh, got a display of where we are in the world, so we always know exactly where we are in the world. It's a lot of camera equipment that we use for our Earth observation program. A little bit of food and drink on the 
aft panel and the overhead and the aft windows. You can see those now. This is the uh, aft flight station. If we were to need to fly the shuttle from that vantage point while we're on orbit, of course, we wouldn't use that for landing. Coming around the right side, we have our recorder so we can record uh, voice and pictures from going uphill and coming back down for landing. That takes us all the way around the cockpit. This is entering the Space Lab module. I'm working on the Express Rack, which is a rack that we'll be flying on our future space station missions. This will allow us to accommodate many of the mid-deck experiments that we currently fly back in the uh, space station. And this is the first flight of that rack, uh, and we have a number of experiments, two of them. Um, Maze, which is a physics of hard spheres, and uh, Astro PGBA, which is a, uh, a plant growth experiment, like a little mini greenhouse that we're carrying on board. Okay, what I'm doing here is uh, taking down some readings off of an experiment that measures the very low level accelerations on board. Now I'm moving over to the droplet combustion experiment. We use this experiment to study combustion, how things burn, in this case, heptane fuel droplets, because uh, the combustion of liquid fuels is very important for our economy and for pollution in this country. important part of our daily routine up here is uh, staying fit and exercising. Uh, we, each of us get to ride for about maybe half an hour a day on the bike, and uh, at 17,000 miles an hour, that lets us go maybe 8,000 miles of pedaling on the bike. Uh, here I am down in the mid-deck working on Astro PGBA. The, uh, we have a number of plants, a number of species of, uh, of, of plants growing inside Astro PGBA, and one of my duties every day is to take video of these plants actually growing. And from day to day, we can actually tell how they are growing in space and how that growth differ differs, perhaps, than what we see on Earth. Well, Jim and Don mentioned about Astro PGBA. Well, here we are. We are removing it from the mid-deck, which is part of the orbiter, and we're going to take it back through the tunnel into the space lab and mount it on the express rack. Here you see it's coming through the tunnel. We're now in the space lab, and we're going to mount it into the express rack, which Don and I explained to you was the rack that we're going to fly on space station. This is it. one of the most important things we're doing on orbit because it's getting us ready for space station. We're getting to try out this hardware for the first time, and if there are any problems with the hardware, we'll know it before space station. Okay, we got that, uh, got that, Chris, and uh, we're just gathered up here on the uh, on the flight deck as a crew to. Uh, in celebration of our, our nation's birthday. Uh, tomorrow will be July 4th, and we know that everybody around the country will uh, largely be taking the day off, at least in some way or another, recognizing the importance of uh, this day in our, in our country's history. And, and we recognize just how lucky we are to, to be Americans, uh, maybe even more so because we're not in the country right now. We're orbiting 185 miles above the surface of the Earth. Uh, but, you know, we're not the only Americans who are out of the country on this 4th of July. There are military members, foreign service members, a number of Americans throughout the world serving their country, country in a number of different ways. Uh, we also want to mention that, uh, that's right, Mike's in space, Mike Full, orbiting in Mir, and our hearts are with him, our hearts and minds are with him, and we know he's in a great adventure, and he's certainly serving his country also. Uh, so to sum it up, from the crew of STS-94, and for all Americans, around the world. Happy birthday, America! Okay, Houston, uh, what you should be looking at now is on the mid-deck. Uh, this is the procedure that we use to remove the locker tool. Uh, what we did was tighten the tool first and then apply the force with the pry bar. And uh, it actually uh, broke off. And you can, you can see this piece here. Um, Susan's going to go in and show you the back of the locker. We think uh, that the mechanism still works fine and that the locker uh, screw will work, and it's only the housing that's broken off. We're not sure when the housing broke off, to be honest with you. We think we might have cracked it earlier before we did this procedure or in between, uh, Greg actually got in there with a uh, 
vice grip, and we think maybe that was the uh, the final thread. Okay, we're getting a real clear view. As we understand it, the uh, the screw is properly in place. Uh, the housing that was on to retain it has come loose, uh, but otherwise everything's working all right. Yeah, that's how we read it. And the, the image is, Chris, is out feels, of focus. Uh, like it has a lot of burrs on it, like it's definitely worn, and uh, we would not want to use it again. We have other tools on board. Copy.